Welcome to the third edition of Dry Fly Adventures. In today's episode, we're going to fish a caddis, and we're going to show you some, give you some insight about how maybe to use a caddis in all different types of water structure. We'll start you out in water that is really, really fast water. Oftentimes, fish will dwell in the top ends of runs in a really, really, really hard riffle. So we'll give you some insight maybe on how to approach those fish and how to get targeted in on a fish in a fast riffle. Then we'll move you to slow water and we'll show you some different patterns that are really critical to slow moving water. To finish out, we'll show you some alternatives to fishing a caddis and the way that you might be able to even search with a caddis and meaning that no fish are at the surface, there are no fish up there feeding, and you're just using a caddis to make the fish come to the surface and eat. In today's program, we would like to introduce you to a group of caddis. Now when you look at those caddis, you'll see that there is just a lot of different structure and a lot of different ways in which these caddis are built. There is a method to our madness. The bugs that you see on this chart are going to vary from fast water bugs to slow water bugs. And in order to fish a caddis properly, you must be able to address all different types of water structure. And the caddises that you're looking at on the screen right now are the caddises that will cover you through every type of water uh, that you may elect to fish. And that includes impounds, uh, high mountain lakes or big structure lakes, slow moving water with no current at all. A caddis is still a very, very effective pattern. So these are the patterns that you'll be viewing and that we'll be using through the process of doing this video. So let's take you to the river now and we'll move in on a fast moving riffle and we'll work a caddis on a fast moving riffle. This is a very common sight on a fast moving riffle with a caddis. You'll notice the fish, they come to the surface, they bang hard and disappear. Keep in mind that same fish could be five feet away by the time that you get your cast made. Do not deliver your fly to the fish until the fish has identified his position. Then cast the fly well out ahead of the fish. He has banged on a real bug and then the next bug that floats into his periphery, it, you want to be your bug. Stay above the fish. Do not blind cast. Cast directly to a specific fish out front. We should up the caddis to an emperor about an 18. There he is. Finally got one of those guys to eat, Jeffrey. In here. Coming up, Jeff. Right. He's not that big of a fish. Yeah, he's frisky, like in the sand. There he is. Jeez. It's only like a half a mile away, Jibri. <laughs> Has he got moss on him or something? That, yeah, I got moss on his head. He's not as big as I thought he was. They're all right. Just don't get nervous. That's the thing I don't like about fish. Get nervous and then see soon. I thought you were big. I'm gonna find out. I can look at you now. You're small. Now that, like I say, is yellow. <laughs> I might know where you live. There oh. Is. Big. You dropped it right on his head. I did. Yeah, he's not big. Coming up. It 
son of a gun. It's pretty. Check it out. Look at those colors on that thing. Okay. Let's see what they do with the caddis. How about that? Okay, you ready? I'm going to try to peel them off this inside edge is what I'm going to try to do. There he is. First damn cast for Chris. What's that? First cast. Mm -hmm. You know, that feels like a, it feels like a pretty heavy fish. And I can't give him too much because this little caddis is, this is only what, 16, 18? One more. Gotcha. Well, they are, they are not uh, shying away from the caddis, Jeffrey. There he is right there. There he is, right there. <laughs> Those are mostly small fish, but <laughs> just the same. They're not afraid of the caddis. Hey, Joseph. We got a caddis that's working pretty good right here. Oh, oh, oh. Straight out from you and probably 15 to 20 feet in that slack water. Oh, God, that's target. that baby to sit up in that water is going to be really tough. Oh, there he is, right there. I hope you got a good knot tied to your backing because we're going to get there. I can tell you that. I get him above him. Oh, that's a nice fish, though. Yeah, that's a pretty nice fish to zoom on him. There you go. All right, Joseph. That's a pretty big fish. One of the other bugs that you're going to have to deal with all summer long, early in the spring and way into the fall, is a caddis. We know the importance of a caddis as a dry fly fisherman. So what we have done is we've created a system by which we did a box that has eight dozen flies in it that are nothing but all of the most prominent caddis hatches that you would experience across the Northwest. That eight dozen bugs in, will take you from the early spring all the way to the big fall caddis in the, in the fall. Here's what it looks like. Now we have fished a riffle. Now let us take you to slower moving water and approach the fish on slow moving water. And the first thing that you need to know is, is it takes a much different fly to address slow water than it did on the fast water stretches that we were fishing before. If you're going to fish slow water, there is one rule you must apply to. Whatever caddis pattern it is that you're using must address the fish and he must be flat belly down on the surface of the water. It is absolutely critical that you have a low plane bug when you fish slow moving water. So let's go to slow water and address some fish out on a big old slick piece of water. There he is. I hope you're filming. <laughs> Perfect, Jeffrey. Is that a gorgeous fish? <laughs> there he is. There he is! <laughs> now we're talking, now we're talking. Right out through the moss. 
Got me. No, he's back. <laughs> Sheesh. <laughs> One more. Is that a fish? He's going. Thank you. And I go, I'm retired, so I can come, you know, whenever the weather's good. I'm not going to come here and spend a right. few oh, days absolutely. when it's terrible. No. <laughs> the good part about the weather being bad. Nobody here. There's a yeah. few people on the river, yeah. and actually, you know, you can get some beautiful little... Oh! There, he there is you right go. There. Oh, nice. He came for that. Yes, he a did. long ways. Yeah, they, will, they will chase a caddis. Well, he can Right up too. Well, he he it. let it go by him, and then he came, then he came and, and, and followed it. it. That's a little size 20 bare belly caddis. It's in another two weeks. He's a player on this river like no tomorrow. That's nice fish. Don't be shy. Just come in here and say hi. You See know, the way the shoal goes out right here? That's yeah. a perfect hatch location for mayflies and caddis. Just kind of roll over. Right. I don't say roll over, but... but that's what I was telling these guys from Virginia. I go, you know, you liked it. And they hit it. I couldn't believe the weather. <laughs> they hit it right. They're flying 3,000 miles. There he is right there. Another big old honker. Let's get him up there where you can take a look at him, Jerry. <laughs> there we go. The old caddy. That's a pretty skinny fish right there, Jerry. Yeah, he's pretty big. Oh, there he is right there. You see my lure? There he is right there. This is another one of those big old dudes. Ooh, check him out, Jerry. Come up, come up, Brownie. You can come up from the bottom. Don't be nervous. You know, that's a pretty big fish. That is a pretty big hey, fish. Hey, hey, hey. Don't be afraid to practice your zoom, Jebby. A couple of bad photographers like you and me. We're about as bad as they get, Jebby. You know, just think of the footage that we might have had, and given the case that Sammy would have been doing all of our filming for us. Yeah, we kind of suck. We do suck. <laughs> we really do. <laughs> Jebby and I are horrible filmers. Yeah, we, you know, we're, we're one thing about Jeffrey and I, we're really honest. Oh. Done all the damage we can do with him. The fly that we have selected to tie for you today is called a Getter Done Caddis. The reason why we're tying this particular fly because it has a great deal of versatility. The fly is basically clipped on the underside, so it will lay belly down in a slow moving surface and it is tied with elk hair or it's tied with whitetail hair and it has great float. So the bug can actually be fished in slow water, it lays belly down and meets the criteria and it can also be fished in very fast water because it has a lot of lift because of the hair tie and the hackle legs for a beautiful rudder system in the tie. So let's go tie a Getter Done Caddis. So let's tie a Getter Done Caddis. I really like this little pattern because of the varying different uses you can use on this particular tie. You can fish it in really slow moving water because it's a real belly down appearance and it's tied with whitetail hair, so it has a lot of float to fish in faster water too. So let's start the thread right down here at the eye of the hook and we'll spin it up to about where we want the thorax 
to actually end. We'll do a little trim off here. And the first thing that we're going to mount in the tie is the rib. And the rib on this tie is 6 aught white unithread. We're just going to slip it in here, and then we're just going to roll it all the way down to the turn of the hook. And then the dubbing that we're going to use on this is, is actually super fine, and it's what would be called blue wing olive super fine. It's a real dark betis green. So what we want to do here is when we put our when we put our dubbing in place, is you want to be real thin on the dub to start, and then you want to bulk the dub as you go down the shank of the hook. So I'm going to begin to turn here, and right here on the end, now I'm going to take the rib, and I'm going to bring it around. I'm going to throw it over the top, and I always like to make two turns right on the end, right there. Then I'm just going to, going to striate the body. And as you know, if you know us at Dry Fly Innovations, we are always striating a body in one way or another. We formulated the, uh, the abdomen, and that's about the look that we want on that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of dyed grizzly, um, and it's betas dyed grizzly, and I'm just going to tie it in right down here. And the purpose of this, we want an implication we want an implication of legs here. So this is our attempt to make it look like this darn bug's got legs. And then I'm just gonna roll the bug forward just like this. And I do not I do not want a lot of hackle on this. I only want an implication of there being legs on this bug, which means that I can take about two turns here. This has white tail hair in the tie. Um, and that purpose is, that it's very difficult to get hair that has a three-tone color exactly over the wing of the fly. And you'll notice as I tie in the white tail at the tip of the, of the hair, it's black, and in the center it's tan, and then it's darkish toward the end. That's exactly the look I want on this caddis, because there is a caddis out there in the world that looks just exactly like that. We want to do just a little measurement out over the top of the fly and get our measurement down just about right. And then just slide the, hat, the, the hair right out over the top of the bug. Make a nice turn, lock it into place. And then we want to go about two or three really tight turns. Now I'm going to accumulate all of the hair at one time. I'm going to pull it back over the fly. And I'm going to put a nice clean little head here We'll work in a couple of nice little tight half hitches here on the end. Now I'm going to accumulate the hair again. I'm going to take it clear out to the end. I'm going to hold it like this, and I'm going to pinch it. Then I'm going to slide my scissors in. I want to cut at a slight angle and trim right there. And the final process in this, I'm going to go in underneath the bug, and I'm going to trim off all of the heckling that is in underneath. Now, as you look at the fly, a finish, the finished fly, the thing I want you to notice here is the reason why we use the white tail hair is, is if you look toward the end, you can see there's a black tip to the hair, then there's a tan center and a dark stem. That gives the wing a three-tone color, and that is really, really, we find to be really important on this tie. It looks almost identical to some of the color tones of the caddis that, are, that exist out there in the real world. So let's take the caddis now, and we're just going to rotate it around in a circle so you can see all of the angles of the bug. And as I turn it this way, you can see the back of the bug looking from an angle on the back, and you can kind of get to see that silhouette. It's a, almost a perfect silhouette um, as we move in this direction. You're looking now at that angle, and you can actually see the flare of the wing and the V-shape of the wing there. I'll continue to rotate it around, and then we'll have a chance to see the underside of the bug here. And you can see that little striated body that you're looking at right about right there. Um, and as you look at that, keep in mind that this betis green, or blueing olive, it's called superfine, the second that that gets wet, it's going to darken about three shades. And what will happen is, is that white thread against that dark backdrop will make a perfect striated body on that little guy. So let's roll it forward. And now you can kind of see the underside of the bug here. And I'll roll it back up to the point of beginning. 
And that is a get her done betas cas. You are good swimmers. Did you just run across? Oh jeez. Okay, cool. That's a great scene right there. I've got yeah. it all I've got it all on film. Check it out, check it out. <laughs> That's really cool. It's almost worth being on the roof for right there, Jimmy. Now we've put you in a riffle and we've put you in slow moving water on a hatch and we have addressed the different types of bugs that you would use there. But the thing that most people don't understand that a caddis can actually be used then as what we would refer to as a searcher bug. A searcher bug is always a bug used when there is no hatch at the surface of the water and the whole idea behind the bug choice is to lure a fish up from the bottom and get that guy to eat outside the hatch. Now we're going to go and use a certain type of caddis in fast moving water as a searcher bug. So let's go to the river and we'll see what happens on a searcher bug. And the one thing I do want you to notice about the footage that, footage that you'll see here you're going to see a lot of fish be hooked, but you will never see one fish out ahead of me here that ever surfaces. We are basically casting that fly to holding water and bringing those fish up from the bottom to eat. So let's go to a fast moving stretch and we'll use a caddis as a searcher. The conditions, you couldn't ask for conditions to be any better. I mean, it's just perfect. Oh, what you got? What you got there, Jeffrey? Did you get that, Sammy? Did you get that, Sammy? Whoa, 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 whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa! Good one. That is a 17-inch fish. Good. Oh, jeez. Oh! There he was. Do something for us, Brownie! Hey, 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 Look at the little Brownie go. Look at little Brownie go. Hey, here comes the Brownie. Ooh. He's a fat little Brownie. He's a rainbow. Mm -hmm. okay, no nice. wonder he jumped. There you go. There he is. There he is, right there, right there. Another big old hog.
right on top of it. There he is. My goalie. Does that fish jump clear out of the water? That was a cool there? take. Really pretty fish. Yeah. Some gorgeous colorations. Pretty nice, huh? Oh, I can't hold it. Slow motion giant. Holy cow. Look at the size of that hog. Look at that. Look at that. To finish up our program today, we'd like to introduce you to a music video. And the music video we're doing, and the reason why we've chosen it is, there are, is a lot of footage on that particular uh, video that addresses a caddis. And you'll recognize many of those as the video is being shown. The video that we're, that we're going to sh play for you is called Unlovable.
we'd like to take just a moment and thank our viewing audience for taking the time to view this program today. And we'd also like to thank the, the, the many, many clients that we have across the country that purchase our bugs, purchase our DVDs, and we hope that you're a better fisherman because of it. Thank you so much.